for our next talk, we're going to have a fireside chat with Graham Devine. Thank you for joining us from Magic Leap. No problem. Happy birthday. Oh, happy birthday to me. Yeah, I'm, happy oh, birthday. Sorry. I'm Gordon Bellamy. Hi, everybody. <laughs> <laughs> so, but no, it's not, it's not my time. It's your time. So. No, it's um, your time. Okay, it's our time. For, so, um, we were both chairs of the IGDA, and yes, as was Noah, sort of a tradition of panelists here at this convention. But let people know a little bit more about you. You've been in this craft for 25 years. You're a lifer. Almost so 40 years. Almost 40 years. I started in 1978 on a TRS-80. All right, so now we're going to hear like origin story, like Spider-Man. I mean, so tell us your origin story. Right now. <laughs> no, I mean, I started back when graphics were... Uh, a little bit different, working my way up through um, a little while at the early Lucasfilm doing the British ports of Ball Blazer, then at Atari for a little while, then I made a game called The Seventh Guest and The Eleventh Hour. Yes. Um, then I made another game called uh, uh, Quake 3 Arena. Um, then went on to, well, I didn't, John Carmack did, I was the designer on it, but um, it's John's game. Um, then went on to Ensemble, worked on Age of Empires 3, and was lead designer on Halo Wars. Then went on to Apple, uh, helped launch the iPad, um, and um, then kind of retired. And uh, uh, in Santa Cruz, California, right down the road from here, and hung out on the beach. So I, I know that can be, so you, you hung up your joystick, you're done. You're like, yeah, iPad, no. I'm over. So now what made you, no pun intended, make the leap? Ah, the magic leap. Oh, this is going to go on for days. Get used to it. I've never heard that one. <laughs> <laughs> no, I was, I was walking my dogs on the beach every day, and it was awesome. And um, if you follow my Facebook, you, you know, pictures of the sunsets and sunrises and so forth. And uh, Rony Abowitz called up and said, hey, I think I need a games guy. And it was very nondescript. It was games guy, and that was the total job description. And I'm like, no, not interested. Um, and he's like... Okay, so then he, a couple of days later he calls up and he, he says, just sign this NDA and, I'll show, you know, and we'll talk some more because what we're doing is really special. Um, so I signed the NDA and he shows me a video and the video is unbelievable. You can't do what's in the video. You can't do that. You can't put photons into rooms and make things real. So I thought, I'll come out to Florida and call you all charlatans to your face. So I go out to Florida and, um, you know, it, Magic Leap at that point is in a shopping mall and it's you know, next to a dentist and there are people with lab coats on when you walk on the inside and there's a dentist next door. Um, but I walked into a room and there in the room is a refrigerator sized you know, piece of machinery. I sat down, looked through it and um, there in front of me was a monster hanging out. I could control the monster with a joystick and it was actually there. It was actually really right there in front of me. And it's like, whoa, that's actually real. And then in the back of the room, the room was fairly dark. Um, another monster actually stood up and kind of waved at me. And I was like, well, that, I didn't even notice that one there. And then you realize that it was actually adding objects into my brain directly. And I'd never seen anything like that before in my life. And so I very quickly made a terrible deal and joined the company. Uh, um, and because I, I wanted to help in any way that, that I could. And Rony wanted to see dragons fly again, and I wanted to help see dragons fly. And slowly, we've grown the company, and we had a path to you know, bring this thing out. So finding out what it means to make games in, in this thing. So, I mean, so you're a, a, a thought leader. You always have been in the game space. And so I know for me, in my sort of design mind, and I talk about a lot of taxonomy. Right, like the, the core definitions that we're going to share as we move forward. So this is this conference is called VRX, but it's obviously also augmented reality. <laughs> it's also, of course, mixed reality. So why don't we just take a second? Like I want to hear from you. Like so, those are topics, but like what do they actually mean to you? What does VR versus MR versus oh, AR yeah. mean? We throw all these terms at you, and next year it'll be like MRX or just X. Um. <laughs> <laughs> it, it may be, yeah. But to me, I mean, we use different terms on purpose. It's not because it's, it's a confusing thing that we go and do. So virtual reality is something that takes you and puts you somewhere else. And I can, you know, go and be somewhere else completely. It's, it covers up my entire world and I'm gone. I'm somewhere else. Uh, augmented reality, we, th we think about that as taking the world and overlaying stuff on top of it. 
So picking up your iPad or your iPhone and it using your GPS to say this way is you know, a restaurant, some you know, a big black billboard on top of the world. You know, that overlays the awesome world that's already there. Mixed reality, we think about as interacting with the world around you. So understanding the world that, that is actually there. So the ability to go you know, put objects behind other objects or to put um, you know, things into the world that understand what the world's actually about and to actually place them as if they're actually in the world. And I have a video of this what? actually in okay. action. So cool, no, because not everyone, has everyone seen, how many people experienced MR? Raise your hand. How many have not? You're about to see some. So I think we're gonna cue your video, right? Roll the video. This is actually at our Florida office. So that's gimbal hanging out under a table. And this is actually all 100% on the device. And then, this is actually right outside of my office. This is a, uh, we did clear off the desk. So the interesting thing there is that A, that's freaking awesome because it's a solar system hanging out on a table, but that you can focus on a solar system and Anna behind the solar system is out of focus. If, if I go then focus on Anna and she comes into focus, the solar system will go out of focus. It's really there on that table in front of you as if it was actually on the table. And as you move your eyesight around backwards and forwards, it goes in and out of focus too. So it, 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 there's no doubt that it's placed right there. So, I mean, how are you, so, okay, so you see that, everyone saw it, so you, you get it, right? The robot's behind the table, it's, under, it's actually under the table under, in the it's, world. It's but, hiding, yeah. Okay. You could make anything, right? You could do anything. How do you, I guess, begin to, to focus and creatively communicate content experiences in MR? Oh, it's tough. I mean, we've been on that road for, for a couple of years now, and we're still learning. I mean, we actually look at that in kind of three buckets. Okay. Um, we have something we call Interaction Lab mm -hmm. at the company that, um, that looks after just experimenting, uh, just trying, 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 you know, and out of that we come up with things like, you know, you know the ability to have a piano that I can just look at and it plays, and the ability to go paint in it with light and so forth, which feels like magic, actually, honestly. Um, so we try different things. We try interfaces and we try to see what things are like and, and actually doing things with the world in front of me. You know, what's it like to go actually go and interact with playing cards? What's it like to actually recognize um, objects? How do I actually, you know, make that work? And then we have what we call the experience incubator, which um, recently ran um, what we call Pitch Fest, which is um, across the company. We asked for ideas and we had 253 ideas in. We took 22 of those to what was aptly called PowerPoint mode. Okay. <laughs> um, for larger presentations, and then we took eight of those and we actually um, made prototypes of those in two, weeks, in two week cycles. And now, so Experience Incubator is an ongoing portion of the company that will keep on providing that as an engine within the company. So we'll keep on doing short sprints. Is that all internal? Like I see, it sounds like you're game, it sounds like you're jamming. That is all internal. It. But it, it's it so, is. So, so there's not like some public, super secret, super hyper NDA group who is no, already tasting the leap. Okay. And, it's a, and then our third group makes yeah, first, yeah. what we actually call true first party, which okay. is, you know, we will go try the grand experiments of the, okay, this is what we think is really real right now, and we'll go and try to make a, a prototype in that, which we spend a little bit more time on, so six months to 12 months to go and see what that's like. So, I mean, how does, how does this bridge to, like, traditional console-y game, <laughs> or does it not? I don't know, you might be like, it's a different thing, and it's a, no, or how does it, is, is there a bridge? Really or is there actually a, just a new? Because back when I started, okay. um, Magic Leap, I was, I thought the, Adding photons to the world is freaking awesome. It's so cool to have monsters running around on tables, and it's, yeah. it, it's awesome. And I thought that um, that was going to be it, that adding photons to the world was it. Um, and we could actually transition games and make you know, jumping games and make gauntlet-type games. And we, we made some of those and, uh, and just put them on the tables in front of us and stick them to the world Yeah, because that's just cool. Um, then our thinking slowly evolved a little bit to, no, actually, the cooler thing is if the things are actually interacting with the world. If I have a character that understands I'm in the kitchen, if I have a character that understands this is playing cards, if yeah. I have a character that understands the role of dice from my hand, 
That's awesome. That's completely different than anything I've seen in, on any consoles, anywhere else. And that's actually where we're starting to get interesting. And all I can say is that uh, two years in, we are incubating, experimenting, trying some stuff. We'll move on again. So, I mean, guess where some of the, so we saw the demo. So I guess I'm going to ask some sort of the key considerations. Like you said, like it knows if you're in the kitchen. Like, does it, so to speak, hypothetically know the, the shape <laughs> that makes it know it's the kitchen? Or does it just know there's a table? And One, it's a table. You know what I mean? Like, is it how? It's funny because our, you know, mathematicians and scientists and they, they're super wonderful, um, um, really clever rocket scientists. They will tell you, hey, we can work out that it's a kitchen. And I'm like, that's awesome. We can have a character in the game ask you, is this your kitchen? Oh, okay. <laughs> Fair enough. Okay. <laughs> I guess which one's easier. No, no, we can work it out really. Like, no, people really like to get asked if this is the kitchen. Yeah, yeah. <laughs> it's, it's okay. <laughs> so, yeah, we ask. Okay. <laughs> okay, got it. Okay. So, okay, so, so, you, give me more, like, help people understand, like, so what are the challenges that are unique, like, the, to the types of game experiences that you want to make in MR? The challenges are, I mean, we had um, Jesse, I'm not sure if he's still here. Um, Jesse's come in up. the house, Jesse Shell. He, he left the building. He, he left the building. Dropped mic. Yeah, dropped mic. That was awesome, by the yeah. way. But um, he said that he felt that um, the gaming in your own home was actually not something that would be fun. Well, for kids. Um, Remember, it was kids, the goblins in the room. For me, yeah. when you place things into your own home, and when you place things that happen in your own home, you actually create a lot of drama. Your memory of that is so much stronger because there was a, a goblin standing in my living room. Mm -hmm. There was, you know, that, you know, I solved a murder in my house last night. I, I watched, you know, um, you know, a story unfold around my house. Your memory of it becomes so much stronger. And I always think about um, the next day of just, um, what are you going to go to work the next day and say, you know, and I always use the example of I went into a cave last night and I killed a dragon because that's a cool story. Um, and so I think about those next day stories of, you know, what can happen in your house and how we can actually do things to, um, you know, to make things happen and feel more real, feel so vivid that you actually think it did happen. You know, your lives are actually enriched further by experiencing entertainment in what we do. And so I think that's very different than anything that's been done before. Right on. Well, so, so you're talking about like these, okay, so mechanics and form, and form aesthetics. So I, I'm super curious. So what are some of the core aesthetics that you want to try to deliver in MR? So, right, technology aside, like what are the, uh, what are the feels? Like what, what <laughs> matters that you think you're going to be able to create, you know? Well, we think a lot about... Um, in part of the pitch fest and part of the incubator and part of everything we look at is yeah. um, we have something called the five the five mile rule. Okay, what's that? Um, the five mile rule is I'm five miles away from my house in my car. Okay. And I've left my smartphone at home. Okay. Um, will I turn my car around and go get it? Okay. Would you? Five miles. Five miles. Well, how far am I going? You're going to work. Oh, I left my phone at home. Yeah. Oh no, yeah, too much FOMO. Yeah. yeah no, yeah, back. Yeah, yeah. I'm late. And I'll text when I get my phone that I'm late. <laughs> <laughs> Maybe send a wave. But, okay, yeah. so now okay. you've left your Apple Watch at home. Yeah, bye. Yeah. That's cool. So what application on your watch would make your watch so useful that you would actually turn your car around and go get it? That my phone doesn't do? Yeah, that your phone doesn't do. Oh, you're asking me if that's supposed to, okay, what would my watch do for me that would make me turn back around? Ugh. So we think about that. I don't know. I'll, I'll ponder that one. I'll get back to you on that one. That's a good question. But we think about that for mixed reality. Okay. I want to be in my car and go, oh, I can't go to the meeting without it. I can't go shopping with it. I can't go see my friends without it. I am a better human because I put this on. Mm -hmm. And we start to ponder, you know, what is that actual application? And for a long time, we thought that, um, that the reason why you would go buy what we're making was, you know, something that is some experience that would be like, you know, oh my God, this is the only way I, I, I can experience Star Wars. I got to line up and go see it, which would be awesome. Um, got to work on that. Then, but then after 30 days, that your use would be something else. It would actually, you know, become like a smartphone because the smartphone use changes. You know, you start texting and you start playing games, and you know, the reason why you really keep using it is, you know, you know, Candy Crush or something. Um, but most devices, actually, the use stays the same. I keep playing a DVD player. I keep playing DVDs. I, I keep playing games on my Xbox and so forth. 
But now, I think we're starting to think that the experience that you go and line up for, for four days at Best Buy in the rain, and are sad that you could only get the 32 gig version because the 128 gig version in red was the really one that you wanted. Yeah. iPhone. That happened and to iPhone 5C. Uh, Sorry oh, for another day. Yeah. But <laughs> everyone's been there, right? Yeah. I mean, you make that choice. Um, is the same experience 30 days later. And I think that kind of thinking and that kind of application is starting to think about enriching your life overall or starting to make you feel you know, smarter and better as a human being. Sure. And a lot of people, when they think about AR, they think about VR. Um, you know, the, the very first thing of what would I want to do in it, you know, is often thinking of, of a single moment, of a single point in time of like, well, I want to see the person's LinkedIn profile up here. I want to, you know, go and have, you know, some kind of, you know, social stream go on. And in reality, we don't live in single points in time. We actually live in, in temporal time, the time that actually goes on and changes constantly. This conversation on stage is already, you know, you know, we're having a conversation, we're thinking of different things than, than you know, I thought at the, the beginning, and every conversation I have is completely different. And so temporally having something that, uh, that, that starts to interact with you and starts to help you, you know, find your way through the day and helps you be smarter okay. is actually very, very interesting. That's super. So you're starting to talk about mechanics and, and well, a little bit, right? Like a little bit about what, so what we saw, right, on the video, what I saw was, like I observed, I was observing. Yep. Right. There's software that's hanging out with you in the world. I yes. mean, there's a gimbal character there. He's hanging out with you. He's a bit scared. He's under the table. Yes. Uh, but he, he does wave in the end. And um, so as we start thinking about what it means to have software living with you, mm -hmm. um, that's extremely different than anything else we've seen before. Because most software, except for games, yes. actually just hurries up to show you something. It, you know, it hurries up to show you a page and then waits for your input you know, word processor, a web page, you know, anything. It hurries up and just, okay, human, what do you want to do next? Just waiting for you. And it's, you know, it's, it, um, games are actually kind of interesting because games will actually you just, you know, typically kill you. <laughs> so are you, I mean, I guess. It, the software that lives with you is very different. Well, I, okay, so software that lived with me in the past, I'm just trying to think about probably my Tamagotchi. Yeah, your Tamagotchi. My Tamagotchi lived with me. And I was so mad when I left it with a friend <laughs> for an hour. <laughs> and they came back dead. So it, when you say lives with you, do you, I mean, are you thinking, are you talking broadly about social, like a social, like an implied social between you and the experience? I think that's actually in the, in the future down the road because, you know, we've talked about inputs and so forth and voice inputs and yeah. how that actually works and that's interesting. It's a lot more interesting when it's something that you can see that, you know, and you're not just talking into the ether. Yes. You know, you're just talking into you know, something that's not there. So when I talk and interact with something, is this your kitchen? Yes. You know, it's much cooler to do that. We have a ghost called Alice. It's much cooler to do that with Alice than, you know, than to do it with anything else. So, so in between, I guess, and maybe it's not linear, but I guess in my, in my head, I think about, like, uh, I was playing some Valkyrie. Like, I loved it. Super fun, right? Pew, pew. Like, awesomely fun, <laughs> right? And I was definitely, the second I put the goggles on, yeah. I was there. You were a Viper right? pilot, yep. And then on the other side is maybe, I don't know if anyone has the, the Amazon thing you can talk to in your house. Echo. Echo, right? You've, if you experience Echo, right? Where it's there and you can talk to, sort of like a Siri on a stick, like, you know, sort of experience. And <laughs> in a good way. In a good way. And I guess my, my question is, from what I saw in the videos, there is sort of a, uh, I guess it is MR, but a thereness of a real thing which is not really, which is, which is really there, like is really there, that people will have to adapt to, you know, the idea of your not, your, you know what I mean, your imaginary, not imaginary friend? Yeah, your so imaginary, not imaginary friend. That's, um, we actually think, of, I, I think a lot about the Amazon Echo because one of the challenges I give game designers coming in is um, make a game for it. Okay. Go make a game for it with no graphics. There's nothing. You can talk to it. That's it. <laughs> Marco Polo. <laughs> well, that's actually a good answer. Um, because it's, it's a great way to start. And then you, yeah. before you start adding the photons, yeah. you know, make something interesting and um, so interaction. But as soon as you start adding the photons, it gets, gets pretty interesting. It does. So, all right. So we saw the, the planets demo. So that means, so, so planets obviously interact. I mean, you, you described them as sort of the photons, right? But is it, I guess, for people's understanding, is it actually more like a 3D engine in your world? Like where things can collide? Like can the, well, the same is that a secret to ask? Can the, can the, 
You know oh. what I mean? Because I just happened to see things where plants were circling and I saw a robot yep, by itself. Yep, yep. But I didn't see anything go boom yet, right? <laughs> and so I'm just naturally curious, right? It's photon, it's not atoms. So yes. anything that you can create with photons, you can create in what we're doing. But anything that has atoms, you know, you, when, you, when you collide it. So it's, it's up to the programmer. It's up to the designers sit and decide what happens when I go and put two things together. Will it react or not react? Gotcha. Um, my, our experience is that your ex expectation is that things behave as the world behaves. So sure. when, you know, that's, that's definitely your expectation and that, that's how design should happen. But other designs, you know, um, you know, ghosts and so forth. You know, there's nothing weirder than having you know Alice put out her hand and say, "Touch my hand, it'll be okay." And people freak out. There's no hand there. There's just photons of a hand, and you know, they they re reach out and they actually feel something. And at that point, I know when when they reach out and they touch the hand, they're like, "Ooh, yes. I got them." No, no, for sure. I, that, that's. I mean, I sort of go back to to taxonomy, there's going to be some new types of experiences that are, okay, so somewhere in my mind, so I think about like, uh, I don't know, Grand Theft Auto, everyone played Grand Theft Auto, right? So there's a big difference between playing it and watching someone play it. Oh, yeah. Right? There's going to be another big difference between playing it and playing it in VR, and it seems like there'd be another difference between having an MR experience, <laughs> right, that goes, I don't know, which, you know, I mean, the, how do you think about that? Like, what do you, uh, maybe describe some other game experiences that you'd want people to have that are uniquely MR, right? Where you go like, I did MR, what did it do? It did this. I think it's, I, I think it's completely different than, yeah. the, than anything we see in VR and anything we see in, um, um, in consoles. And I, I think back to the, you know, to the old cartoons in the 1940s when they started to break down the fourth wall and, um, you know, the, the, there was the cartoons where the guy's playing the fiddle and then the fiddle breaks and so he, he goes and he pulls the string that looked like a hair on, on, on the, the projector and he puts it onto his fiddle and so forth. And I think about the, you know, the shadow on the screen and then the guy shouts at him. And those are the kinds of designs where we actually start to break the fourth wall into your world, mm -hmm. in, into you. Yeah. And that's actually where MR is actually going to excel. Um, things affect you directly so that, um, you know, even when, you know, you stop and you're like, I'm, I'm just I'm going to go to Starbucks, you're still thinking, oh my gosh, that thing's in my house. Or... So, so I'm obviously doing an academia, so I have an academic sort of question to ponder, which is, so I had a, a dream, it didn't really happen, which was that like, like when the Wii came along, mm -hmm. there'd be a new generation of designers in my head, they were called Wiimotos, who hated buttons. Wiimotos, they didn't know anything yes. about them. They just loved to <laughs> swipe old. around and wipe around, and they were just, you know, right? And that'd be intuitive for them. And they'd be, you know what I mean? They'd be brilliant at that. Um, obviously, all the kids today naturally know how to use a tablet device. Yep, yep. I guess my question to you at the forefront of it is, like, how do you think about cultivating a generation of MR designers and content creators, right? Because you can't oh, make it all. Yep. You've got to somehow create some sort of, I don't know, Actually, structure by which people can be a part of it at some point. Something that struck me just actually recently is that um, we have a once in a lifetime opportunity okay. at Magic Leap. Yeah. Because I'm creating an ecosystem from start to finish. Okay. How you perceive software, how you buy software, how you interact with software, how you perceive software ongoing in your life. You know, up until now, you know, the, the way you get games, the way you get software, the way you get things has always been, you know, e even classically on smartphones are transferred to a store that you go and actually get things. Um, we're actually redefining what it means to be a platform Ooh. in a very different way. Okay. And that's actually a once in a lifetime opportunity. I mean, how often do you get to go and say- Wait, is this a tease or a world premiere? No, this, 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 okay. is, the way I'm, this is the way I'm <laughs> thinking. Okay, this okay. Is, <laughs> this is all, you know, 2025. Who knows? Okay, understood, 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 okay. <laughs> but the opportunity is, you know, to recreate, is to create a brand new way of having a new platform and to create different ways to sell software. Have people think of it differently. Don't have people think about it just as, you know, this one thing I'm going to sit and download that becomes this one piece of software that hangs out. Mm -hmm. Let it, you know, and, you know, we fully realize that the best stuff will not come from Magic Leap. The best stuff will come from developers around the world. It's my job to go and, you know, and create the, you know, the ask for, the, you, know, for, for, you know, for what we're doing to create some excitement around it, to cr go create some, um, 
something that's like, oh my God, it shows the road. But all we'll do is show the starts, the starting line, right. and hopefully, you know, some illumination down that way. Sure. And there'll be people that go that way, and there'll be people that the desert looks good, the ocean over there, awesome. Yeah. And that's where the fun is going to start. But if we actually give them a new platform, yeah, I think it'll be very interesting. Well, it's funny. I sort of go back. I don't know if, if any of y'all were here back in the old like games monetization conference days. And uh, um, <laughs> yes. God, I forget he's awesome guy who ran Unity. Do you remember? Yes, awesome guy. He'd come sitting on the stage, and he'd be like, I'm going to democratize games. And people would be like, how many <laughs> polygons does it do, right? Where's your store? But he's like, I'm going to do it. And he, uh, not only did they make the engine, but what they really did was they pounded the pavement, right? Like, wherever you're all from, there was like a Unity event, and they were just sort of building yep, yep, community, yep. community, community. And then ultimately, all the young people don't care. They're like, let's, you know, let's do this. It seems like you have a similar challenge right, to, you know, not just to have the, the best or most unique experience, but for people to, to act, be activated against it. It's a huge challenge. So yeah. I, I think it's, it, it's happened before in the game industry, though. I think, you know, to me, I still think back to, like, Super Mario 64. Okay. Um, which really changed the game industry for me. In that point, games changed, right? Before games which were two-dimensional, and they were, you know, the game designs were all classic 2D, very few 3D games. When Super Mario 64 came out, 3D game design changed, cameras changed in games, you know, the way you perceive puzzles in games, level design changed, graphics changed. And it's 2015, 2016 almost, and we're still playing Super Mario 64. With better graphics, mm -hmm. um, I mean, awesome graphics, but it's still really, it's puzzles in the 3D world that I've bounced around and I still complain about the cameras. Um, we have a chance to go and make software that exists right here. Yes. and exists right with you, and exists as part of your day ongoing, exists as part of your everyday world, and that's just incredible. That is incredible, and, and not too far off. I know we're not doing dates, but it's coming. Um, we're working really hard. You're working, you're, you're working, <laughs> we're working really hard. Well, no, this is great. That means we can like reconvene every year and just see, because like, you can't show that same movie next year. We'll be like, so, where's the robot? No. <laughs> um, Robot's coming with me. <laughs> no, but, well, let me ask the difference. Like, so right now it is, I mean, who do you, who influences you then? Maybe that's the question, because you work with who you work with, but who is sort of maybe inspiring you like, as you go on this challenge, besides, I guess, Mario 64? I've got to tell you, it, sure. it, it, it's Magic Leap, because Magic Leap, you know, yeah. chief futurist, Neil Stevenson. So Neil's hanging out, doing the whiteboard full oh, okay. stuff, and going the thing. And then we've got rocket scientists from NASA, who really are rocket scientists from NASA. Um, yeah. We've got yeah. Andy Lanning, who, who wrote, we got, got into the galaxy. We, yeah. it's, you know, we got comic book artists talking to plasma, you know, plasma wave specialists, talking to rocket scientists, talking to Neil Stevenson. And those conversations happen at lunch. <laughs> and the buzz that comes off that at the office is electric. Absolutely incredible. And I'm just there with crayons, really. You know, just, <laughs> like, you think, um, Super Mario 64, <laughs> and these guys, they're, 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 they're inspiring. So basically it's like gonna be the best summer internship ever for whoever gets it, Yeah, whoever gets in there. Definitely. So I think I, I see the time, I see the look in Pete's eyes saying, right, but I want people to know, like, so what do you want people to know right now about you know, Magic Leap looking forward? That has been my final question to you. Like, what should people absolutely be taking away? To start thinking about gaming um, and designing in, in mixed reality um, and to help, you know, we want to move people on from the two years where we, that we were of, you know, to taking that journey with us and starting to use a common language around our game designs and around our application designs and finding what that common language is. Because that's something we'll find together. That's not something, you know, we'll come out and say, this is how we talk about it. And, um, but I'm anxious to find that dialogue of, of, of a common language going forward for the whole industry. And I think that's really important um, so, so that the conversation can happen amongst everyone. Okay, well, I look forward to continuing this conversation. You're, you know, you're <laughs> on the clock for next year. So thank you very much, Graham. Happy birthday again. Oh, thank you. Thank you. <laughs>